Hey viewers, this is SkyFi Audio from Glen Rock, New Jersey. Today we've got a pair of HW19 turntables from VPI uh, getting prepared uh, for, for listing on our website at skyfiaudio.com. And I thought I'd, I thought I'd do a quick tutorial to show you some of the features and functionality of the HW19, which is a, a very sweet turntable from uh, somewhere between the mid 80s to the mid 90s. Uh, they came in three variations, MK1, MK2, and MK3. And I'll uh, go over some of the particulars of these two models. The, the first thing that stands out is the, the wood finish. Uh, this seems to be finished in a walnut and this in a light oak. Uh, so the left one's a light oak. Um, the second obvious difference is uh, the plinth uh, or the, the plinth material on this particular one is made out of a, a gloss acrylic black. And this one is uh, some sort of laminate. Uh, they're both sprung, meaning that they sit on uh, four uh, heavy-duty springs, which I tend to like on vintage turntables. A lot of the modern turntables are essentially just a motor strapped to a slab of Formica, and uh, there's really not much engineering or merit to them. Uh, that would be a dampened design, while this is uh, a sprung design. Uh, I tend to like these better. Uh, they're more forgiving when you walk or stomp across a room, and there's just more to them. Um, so they're they're generally uh, higher engineered turntables. Uh, both of these are fitted with an EMT tone arm. This is the EMT tone arm two. Um, it's a tangential tone arm. Uh, for you, for those of you that are new to turntables, uh, tangential tone arms essentially um, slide across the surface from left to right here staying always perpendicular to the record surface. There are some geometric advantages to that, but there's also some engineering complexities to it versus a pivoting tone arm, which essentially you know, sits here and pivots uh, through the record surface from a fixed point. That has some geometric compromises. The tangentials have some engineering compromises. So there are fans for both. Um, Notably, the most difficult thing about a tangential torn arm is providing a surface with very little to no friction so that the arm can freely slide across the record surface. Uh, this particular company, Eminent Technology, chose to do that with an air bearing, which is essentially um, a bearing surface in here, precisely ground, um, and then fitted with an air pump, which provides a stream of air to reduce or eliminate the friction. So you end up with essentially a torn arm that can, you can pretty much just blow on it and it'll, it'll slide across the, the surface of the record, much like an air hockey table would. So it's a very quiet pump. Um, it's just a very high quality metal case pump. You can barely hear it when it's running. And as you can see, it runs down this hose to a filter and then onto the, through the bottom of the turntable onto the torn arm. Um, so, other than that, there are your typical adjustments. There's one here for uh, your counterweight for your tracking force. And then the rest of the adjustments on here are essentially just geometric adjustments for horizontal and vertical alignment. Uh, pretty robust and easy to use. You normally would just uh, cue it up to the spot that you like. Let's see, we go to the second song here by pushing on the tone arm. And then this is essentially here your lever to drop it. So right now it's in contact with the record surface. So essentially it's the grooves on the record that will make the tone arm advance and slide as it progresses. Now we'll do the opposite to lift it. This is a cam mechanism here at this tone arm that it's got an eccentric so that'll lift the torn arm. Pretty simple to use. Uh, we fitted this one with uh, a Sumiko Moonstone cartridge. It's a moving magnet cartridge that we like mostly because it's very forgiving. It's a good sounding cartridge and it's also forgiving because it has a removable stylus. Um, much like the Grados did back in the day. So in case you make a mistake and ruin the stylus you can just replace it yourself it's a very nice cartridge um, it's also upgradable through its product range 
So I think there are four variations of this particular stylus. So once you get a body, you can go ahead and change them as you see fit. Uh, moving on, um, VPI uses a synchronous motor that is essentially synchronized to your AC current's frequency. Um, it's a belt-driven turntable, and I'll take the cover off here so you can see what that's about. Pretty simple synchronous motor. It's very large, oversized for this turntable, and uh, a silicone belt. And you see here provisions for both 33 and 45, so you would manually have to flip this to the next groove in order to play a 45 record. Bit of an inconvenience, especially since it's under this cover that is held together by three screws. So not, not for people that are switching back and forth between 33 and 45s all the time. It would be just too inconvenient. Although you could potentially plug this into an external power supply that would give you a push button selection between the two speeds. Uh, other notable design uh, is the the platter itself, I'm sorry, the torn arm. It's about a five inch torn arm that is replaceable. You see the six screws here. So if you wanted to mount uh, a pivoting torn arm or something with a different configuration, you could just have a new uh, torn arm base made for the turntable. And I'll show you the same thing on the acrylic model right here. Um, power button on these VPIs is actually buried here on the side of the case, but it's not fairly convenient. It's just hard to find the first time if <laughs> no one showed you where it is. And this one has it in the exact same place. Uh, other things is the platter itself is uh, pretty heavy. I think it's just about nine or 10 pounds. So it's a very, very dense uh, platter. It must be reinforced with some sort of lead or, or a heavy metal within it. Um, typical acrylic cover fitted to both units. And uh, let's give you a different view here of the tone arm. Here's the hose that comes from the, from the pump and goes into the air bearing right there. Oh, another interesting uh, thing I noticed, uh, although they're both eminent technology uh, Model 2s, this one has a, a tray attached to the left side of it. I don't know if the first one's missing or whether it's just a different variation, but it looks like this would be filled with some sort of silicone dampener. Um, and as the turn on would glide across the surface, this particular metal piece there essentially has to push its way through the silicone, the heavy gauge silicone. So we will fill this up and give it a shot. Um, and that would sort of dampen the, the arm's movement from left to right, which is a neat, neat, a neat addition to this eminent technology. Now, if you tilt the turntable, you'll spill the oil. So a bit of an inconvenience if you're moving it around, but as long as you're careful with it. Uh, we, we do like uh, tone arms that are silicone dampened. Uh, this particular turntable will also be fitted with a cartridge, probably also some sort of Semico. Uh, have a look at our website and uh, to see what the final price and details are on it. And you could also just pick whatever cartridge you want from our lineup. We've got a configurator that lets you uh, pick and choose what you want bundled with it. Um, I think that's about it. In terms of packing, well, we've got this amazing Instapack packing machine. People ask all the time, well, if I buy this turntable, uh, it's heavy, it's complex, it's delicate. Well, we've gotten very good at packing heavy, complex, delicate things. Um, thanks to our Instant Pack expanding foam machine, it allows us to make essentially custom fitted foam cases for everything that we ship. And we've got a great success in delivering things reliably. Um, so that's it, VPI HW19 from SkyFi Audio. Uh, please uh, subscribe to our channel and let us know what you think of our videos. Thanks so much.